Hello everyone, I'm John Higgins, contributor and writer to Film TV Now, and I'd like to welcome you all to this very special interview with writer-director Max Sheldon about his acclaimed new short, The Electricity in Me. It is based on the true life account of Sheldon's birth mother, Joan Stockdale, and her reflections in her diary. She left Saskatchewan in Canada for London to have a child, a conscious choice after being made pregnant at 50 by a university professor whilst in London in 1979. Matt, a warm welcome to you. Uh, nice to meet you too. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So given this is a personal story, I mean, how challenging was it to create a script based on this? Uh, actually, the script, when it came to writing it, just sort of fell out of me. That wasn't that wasn't actually as difficult as you might think. But um, I had tried many for many years um, to 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 tell the story, and, and and I've always failed. And for some reason, I was just ready to do it now. Um, and it was partly because of the the the. the the, the time pressure I knew that we had a Laura for a certain slot and uh, I was going to meet a Laura and I, and I and I was excited and and terrified to share something a, a piece of material that um I tried to develop for a long time but but when it came to actually writing it um I think I've just been s somewhere at some unconscious level being thinking this story through for 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 for, for, for many many years. Mm -hmm. And I've got to talk about because what's significant about it is it's she holds the frame for the majority of the film and we, we don't see much else. We see a few intercuts, but she's yeah. actually telling the story. And it's quite unusual that we I, I mean, I, it's it's quite unusual. I haven't seen it certainly in a short because often it's two handers or we have locations. I mean, for a short film, this is actually um you know it's it's quite a powerful thing because you're focusing on one act, actress yeah how did you prepare how did she prepare for the film in this case um she uh yeah i think she went to um a really personal place to figure out how to how to um Ian Thoreau, really. I think she really thought about um, some lived experiences. I know she ran her lines many, many times. She said, she said to me, she ran them a hundred times um, before we rehearsed uh, on her own. Um, she, yeah, she she poured a lot of time. She she's she's extremely thorough. She's very professional, but she was just really open and vulnerable, really, to to responding to the material. Mm hmm. And um... Uh, um, uh, yeah, yeah, and 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 yes, there was rehearsal, but the rehearsal was extremely limited because she was she was kind of ready to go by the time we met. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's talk a little bit about the context and subtext of the film because it is about the poor treatment of unwed mothers by Canada. I mean, it it's a different time, and you know the perceptions and perspectives um, at the time. I mean, like anything, I mean, we are getting. A lot of movies these days where they're talking about the history. I mean, we're talking about civil rights, you know, diversity and gender and everything else, colonialism. I mean, tell us a bit about the background, because obviously, I mean, I understand that there was a report by the Canadian Senate, which was highlighting this part of history. I mean, I'm just curious to know, in terms of where unwed mothers may stand in the locality i mean what strides are taken to give them support and um and, and of course what barriers are they facing still even after all this time i know that um in the um in the 50s and 60s um societally as you refer to uh, um to be an unwed pregnant woman in canada was unacceptable now that didn't happen to to, to my birth mother Joan. Um, she left Canada, I think, as a conscious decision to 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 take control of how she, and when she was going to give her baby up. That that that, that it was her choice, um, and I think she knew in London, but I don't know. But I have no I have no factual evidence for this. But I suspect she knew that if she if she left. Um, her family, who were 
who who was which was dominated by a a, a strong father figure who would have not been supportive um so her t- sisters tell me um and she she came to london to, to take control of it um 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 and and that's and that's why she did it but she yeah it was a difficult it was it was i think she had an impossible decision to make you know stay stay in canada and potentially um be shamed for having a baby out of wedlock or come to London and leave your family. Um, it was an impossible choice. Mm-hmm. And um, what's the significance of the title, The Electricity and Me? That's about connection. Okay. It's about, it's about, um, can you know someone, um, but n- not meet them, I guess, you know, and it was a line, it was a line, it was a line of dialogue in an earlier draft. Which got, which was cut, but it just seemed to. Hopefully, it spoke to me that um, I believe in some way that um, I have some some unseen link to to Joan, even though we never met. I sat in a room with her, with her best friend, um, who I tracked down, who pointed to a chair and said, "Who?" Which was only like a couple of meters from where I was sitting, and said, "Oh, your your mum used to sit there." And 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 definitely, you know, it was one of those uh, hairs on the back of your neck standing up. It was it was it was it was quite extraordinary, really. Mm-hmm. And let's talk a little bit about the locations. I mean, obviously, the bulk of it takes place in an office. I mean, it, you know, you 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 keep most of the action in the context of Laura's performance yeah. in the office, but you also have some brief shots of exteriors. Tell us a bit about the office location and also some of the significance of the yeah. shots that you took in and on location. Yeah. The, the, the office was uh, actually very close to where I live. It was in, it was shot in Mile End in London. Um, it was, uh, it's an old engineering work that they'd, they'd, they'd um, um, but they kept a boardroom, which was fitted out as it was in the, in the seventies or early eighties, fantastic location. Um, um, uh, and uh, and and much of it look, looks as it did. We brought in the furniture and we had an incredibly uh, talented um, production design art direction team who who were working on really, really big films. I mean, they just worked on Sam Mendes' um, Empire of Light. The production designer, Adam O'Neill, is working on the new Alien film. I mean, you know, next level ta- talent, really, which don't usually work on short films. We're extremely lucky. Um, the Canadian locations meant a lot to me. They were of the prairies. This is where Joan grew up. Um, there's a, a shot of where she was laid to rest in um, Punachai Cemetery. That cemetery actually was um, was no was was um, was donated to to the to the local authority, the local government in the area by the uh, by the Stockdale family. Um, it, it, it was kind of funny. I rang up. I ran the town clerk in the area to say, could we film there uh, to ask permission? And, and bear in mind, this is rural Canada. It's a prairie. It is literally the middle of nowhere. Um, it's just farmland. And and she was like, you know, I, I said, do I have to sign something? Do I have to write an email? Do I have to fill out a form? Um, um, and they're like, yeah, you can film. There's, there's no form. You can just, just, just film. And it was, it was, but it was extremely important to me to be where, where she was um and i know not everyone watching will appreciate that but but i kind of believe in feeling it and you know those locations were were, were very important to me yeah i mean obviously I, I mean i have to say that they are it's kind of nice because i just feel that you know although it's a tree or a field or something like that i mean we do have a brief shot of the stockdale um grave and stuff which is or the placard i mean that was what i i noticed so I think it is important. I think in a way that's what heightens the experience of watching the film. Um, I mean, you've already answered my bit about the production team. Tell us a bit about how long did it take to make? Oh, the shoot, it was one day. Okay. Well, well, two days, one day in Canada, one day in London. Um, the editing took forever, um, mainly because we had to try many many versions with or without different diary entries and letter entries and timings um 
and we did 30 different cuts, 31 different cuts. Um, that took us months, but the shoot itself was only was only two days. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about Alora. I mean, I understand that she's a BAFTA breakthrough, BIFTA nominated and Screen International Star of Tomorrow. I mean, obviously having accolades like that, and I think you have talked a bit about her availability. I mean, would you love to work with her again? I mean, what what's she at the moment? Of, of course. I mean, she's a she's a fabulous talent. Um, she I mean, anyone who sees that performance, I I would um uh, yeah, I would say that it's it's hard to not be moved by what she's doing on the, on on the screen. Um, she's yeah, I'd, I'd love to work with her again, of yeah. course. I th- I I certainly get it. I mean, the way that she she changes, you know, her, her tone changes, and the way that she, her emotion is is fantastic. So I have I'm inclined to agree, and anybody watching certainly should check this out. Um, so obviously, just a, a follow on question from one earlier is um. I, have you shown the short to Canadian government officials? I mean, are you planning to take the people? Are you planning to take it to them if you haven't seen it as a point of reference? Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a really good point. Um, I think when it's available, more widely available, it's been in festivals for the last five or six months. It will launch uh, third week in January online, uh, and I think I will send it to. Um, um, uh, particularly, there's one person who who helped author author the Senate report that uh, who was um, who was a uh, a, 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 a an adopted person um, um, like me, um, and I I would like to to share it um, with with, with um, yeah some people in the Canadian government. That would be interesting to see what the reaction is actually. Okay. And obviously, I think this is a really solid, I mean, it's a solid short feature. I mean, but are you planning to expand it into a feature thing? Because obviously, part of the reason is, is obviously because of what's happening now, because we are having a desire after Me Too and Time's Up to have more female driven stories. And I think that what, you know, although this touches on one element, I think there's a real potential to tell this story in an even bigger canvas. So have you have you thought about that? I have and I am um, actively developing it for to be a feature to be a feature project. I, I do think there's a lot about Joan's story which um, people respond to. Um, I think there is a, there's a there's a place to make a film which is perhaps often the subject is quite sentimental, um, and I'm not criticising other people's work. It's more I just think there's another way to tell this story. Mm. Um, you know, she had quite a she had a she had a sort of an unspoken, very stoic form of grief that she privately dealt with. But with that, there was a certain frustration and actually quiet rage to what, what she went through. And I want to give her more time uh, in in writing an alternative history to give her a chance to, to express that, actually. OK. And um, just a general question to yourself. I mean, who and what are your key cinematic influences? Ooh, uh the long list um um yeah, i mean everyone from um um from, from from david fincher to um um uh, uh spielberg kubrick um lynn mansley lynn lynn ramsey sir steve mcqueen um andrea arnold um I mean, the list is, it's a long list. Um, okay. Lynn Ramsey, I guessed, actually, really, uh, I mean, what she, she's extremely minimal with her, with her shot choices. Um, she gets incredible performances out of her, for her performers. You were never really here. It's a fantastic piece of work. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, th- I would say Lynn is one of my um, cinematic heroes, I guess. Okay. And um, let's a couple of final questions for you. I mean, obviously, um, where can people get involved? I mean, is there a social media, and where can people view the film? It, it, yeah, it'll be it's it's not viewable yet. But it'll be viewed. Uh, it'll be on uh, Vimeo and YouTube in third week of January. Um, and um, uh, social media is just just my name, Matt underscore Sheldon one T. Um, so and and we'll be announcing on 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 that panel. 
Okay, that's great. And the final question from me before we wrap up is, what are you most proud of about this short? I think I'm just really grateful that it's found an audience and 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 a lot of fabulous performance because it, it definitely has reached people in ways that I never thought we would. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really pr I'm really proud of what she does and and how she how she tells the story actually. Okay. Well, listen, Matt, thank you so, so much for your time and insights today. Um, as mentioned in, by Matt, The Electricity in Me is going to be available on Vimeo and YouTube in January 2023. So please do try and check that out and check out social media. If you are happen to be at any film festivals and this movie is playing as part of one of them, by all means, do see it as part of the other films in the festival. But then again, support independent films and short films. Short films are a great way of showcasing great talent. You know, it's not just features and mainstream films that are making it big. So on the, that note again, thank you very much, Matt. Um, you can see- Thanks so much. Yeah, you can see this interview on my YouTube channel, John Higgins Film Review, and you can read more of my reviews at www.filmandtvnow.com. And in addition, we have just, I've just launched a new film review website called whatmovie.co.uk, which we launched in April of 2022. So thank you very much. Again, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again soon.